we're going to do a teaser tag, and then the intro song, and then start the unboxing. Okay, we'll do this in five. December's here. That's awkward. Try again. the tone, but I can't picture the actual thing. Board game bento, December. <laughs> okay, we'll give it. Hey all. Joe here with All Funnies and Games, and board game bento number three just got here. This time, I remembered to put paper over my address because I'm a responsible adult, and also had some scrap cut up paper left on my desk from another project that, we'll talk about that later. Not this video. That's gonna be a video as soon as I figure out how to set up my camera the way I want it for that thing. Anyway. Board game bento. So, last month I got four games from this. I haven't got to try them all yet. Uh, I really wanted to try Dreamwell, but I couldn't find anyone who was down to try it. Uh, Quartex was fun. It kind of felt like a throwback to what American board games were like before the Euro game renaissance, whatever you want to call it, that's happening now. So, like, not super mechanically deep, but just a way to pass the time. It was kind of one of those rainy day games that you probably remember from your childhood. And it was well designed for, for being that. Uh, the winner so far, though, is Vi. Vi has been a huge hit. Uh, you know, between Thanksgiving and having my, uh, my brother and my sister-in-law in town and everything like that, we had a lot of board game days. And Vi has been a big hit with my parents, and my mom especially loves the game. And I really like it too. It's one of those, I think it's what I was hoping it would be, in that it was very mechanically deep, and, or, flip that around. Very mechanically simple, very strategically deep, which is what I really like from a board game. And since last month it was kind of fun to have no idea what was coming in the box, I intentionally tried to stay spoiler free for this month. I have no idea what this is going to be. We're going to find out together. Ba -ba -ba -ba. Okay. Ooh, okay. Oh, I recognize one of these. Okay. Looks like three games this month. Cool. Yep, three games this month. Okay. And one of them I've played before and enjoyed, so that's good. Rocky Road a la mode. Okay. Get in the driver's seat and feel what it's like to live the life of a sweet treat trucker. Stock up your truck, attract customers, and serve a hefty scoop of tasty frozen delight. The best truckers get to know their customers' favorite selections so that they can always meet demand and gain an edge over the competition in the battle to claim the hottest locations. You'll see the business of icy entrepreneurship is no day at the beach. Buckle up, turn on the loudspeaker, and take to the rocky road with ice cream. Okay, so it's Ice Cream Truck Wars, the game, which was a horrendously violent time in some country's history. Ireland? Did Ireland have the Ice Cream Truck Wars? This seems more innocent than that. I, I don't think the IRA is getting involved. It, it doesn't look like that kind of game. Although if you had the option, <laughs> if, if this game is exactly what it looks like, except there's one card that lets you take out a Mafia hit on your opponent, that would be the funniest thing ever. Something tells me that's not what's going to happen when I try this game, but it does look fun. Um, it kind of reminds me of one I got to play over the Thanksgiving stuff recently called Harbor. Um, just economics games are starting to take off where it's like, okay, 
how could an ep- economics game look nothing like Monopoly and still work? And I think a lot of people are starting to play with that idea, and this looks like one of those as well, which, neat, I'm down. Cool. Oh wait, this was the one about professions. Okay, I think there's like a one month delay because I thought last month's was supposed to be the one about professions and I got confused. So probably the things I skipped the spoilers on are what I'm going to get next month. I think there's a delay looking at this. Okay. Uh, Hot Shots. The competitive... The cooperative wildfire fighting game. Cooperative makes a lot more sense than competitive in that context. A competitive firefighting game would be very strange. Like, haha, I have saved my business and burned yours down. I mean, not saying it couldn't be a good game, but it makes more sense to be cooperative. Uh, you and your friends are a hotshot crew called to fight a raging forest fire. Use special abilities, teamwork, and dice rolling to press your luck against the blaze. Cut fire breaks, reduce flames, generate reward tokens, and maneuver vehicles before eight tiles are scorched and the forest is lost. Okay. So it's got co-op and press your luck dice mechanic elements. That's... That might be unique. I've never seen a game do that those two mechanics together before. Okay. Says it should be about one hour, ten and up. It's got the zero to three, don't let them play it thing on it, which might mean nothing, (laughs) honestly. Like, there's a lot of games, especially indie games, where they're just... Okay, so we can either put this sticker on there for the cost of that much ink, or pay to have it tested to see if it's safe for toddlers and lose a lot of money. So they're... This one looks like it does have some small pieces, but there are games that would absolutely be safe for toddlers that just can't afford to be tested to prove that they're safe for toddlers, and it's kind of sad that that happens. I mean, it makes sense, but I don't know. Come in with your eyes open as a consumer, I guess. Okay, third one we've got, and this is the one I've played before. Um, This one's actually pretty fun. It's called New York 1901. I played it a while ago, so I remember kind of the theming of it. Like, you are trying to fill up city blocks with, like, nice, expensive, high-end buildings. Uh, Compete to build skyscrapers on some of Lower Manhattan's most iconic streets. That's what it was. And so it's a lot about... Like, do you know those old video games where inventory management was all about having, like... Inventory management took keys from Tetris almost, where it's like you have a 2 by 3 block of inventory so you can have this little L shape here, this little 2 piece here, and this little 1 piece here. I think that was actually how upgrades worked in the old Mega Man Battle.net games. This is a little bit similar. You can kind of see how the city grids look on the board there, and you can see some of the pieces you get to place and how they're kind of odd shaped. Um, So it It was definitely a fun game when I played it before. And yeah, that'll be neat. I'm excited. Cool, so New York 1901 about building skyscrapers over a hundred years ago. That's weird to think of that the early 1900s are more than a century ago now. I didn't have anything to add to that. That's just weird to think about sometimes. Like, I was born in 87, so 1990 was, wow, a really long time ago. Come on, brain, do math. It's 2017, so that's seven, that's 27 years ago. It was 1990, and over a century ago it was 1901. That was a weird, pointless tangent. Anyway, New York 1901. A co- cooperative firefighting game that this this one looks fun. This might be the first one I'm eager to play from this set because I don't know. I really like games like this. You know, my absolute favorites are the 
streamlined mechanics to depth of strategy, like I said. But a close second are some of these co-op games where you have to manage the map in some ways, and this looks like that. Like, the map on the back there looks like it takes a lot of cues from Catan, just being the hex grid, you know, different setup every game, it looks like. And so, with that, you know, a co-op game with the press-your-luck mechanics and some elements that looks like it might be similar to Pandemic, maybe? If you've ever played Pandemic, because that's combating the spread of disease in a co-op game. This is combating the spread of fire. So, yeah. That one's probably going to be the one I'm most excited to get to try. But then again, that's what I said about Dreamwell, so that's going to depend on if I can find interested people to play with me. I still want to play Dreamwell. That one looked so good. And then Rocky Road a la mode. That's going to be nice, simple. No. I want to say small box game. My brother started throwing that term around within the last couple of weeks. And I don't know if there's more distinction to being a small box game than just coming in a small box. That might actually even be a brand name. I don't know. But it's... I can throw it in my backpack and bring it somewhere. I'll put it that way. So that's going to be a good one if I ever just have to be in a waiting room for a while. So anyway, yeah. Three new games. I sent the little card of what they all are. And, yeah. December's board game Vento. That's going to be really good because coming up on Christmas time, I'm definitely going to have some stuff that people are going to want to play some board games. Let's do it. <laughs> so anyway, that was this month's. Thank you for watching this unboxing. It's a lot of fun to do these. You know, these are relatively simple to make compared to some of the other stuff I do on this channel. So I like getting to have just this once a month. I almost think of it as my once a month freebie of like, okay, I plan out, you know, this many blogs a month, but then I have one that I just plan to react to a thing. And yeah, it's fun. I like it and I like getting the games. Like like I said, Vi was such a good pull last month. Like just how popular it was with the family that quickly. You know, we're just starting to bring in some of the special cards there. So uh, if you're watching and you know who made Vi, tell them some guy on YouTube with six subscribers said good job. It'll probably mean nothing to her. <laughs> uh, that got too real. Anyway, I've been Joe with All Funnies and Games. This has been December's unboxing of the board game Bento. If you liked what you saw and you want to see more of the content, including some of the stuff that I spend a little more time on and put a little more effort into, uh, you can like, comment, subscribe if you want to see more of the stuff. More than any of that, if you enjoyed it, tell a friend. You know, show this to someone who you think would enjoy it. Because maybe they will. And if they enjoy it, and I get a sub, I think everybody wins. You know, you saw something you liked. And I got the little, I got another sub. Which just feels good, you know? So anyway. Thank you for watching. This has been a lot of fun. I'll see you next time.